Uh, me, I'm Jeremy, like I said, um, I'm one of the preparators. So I'm a paleontologist here, uh, I work in the vertebrate paleontology lab, and uh, as a preparator I get to work on all the fossils that we uh, collect from the field. And so a little bit about me, how I got interested in this thing. Um, Nap. Oh, first off, I should show you, if you're watching from afar, we're here in Nebraska, kind of right there. And so we're the state museum for the uh, for the whole state. So all the fossils that we find throughout the state come here, and uh, we have a collection of over a million and a half vertebrate fossils that uh, have been collected from 91 out of the 93 counties, so pretty much anywhere in the state. And so during this uh, feed, if you guys have any comments or questions, you can just drop them below, and then we'll try to answer them either during this video or if you are watching later, we'll keep looking at this thread and try to answer all the questions that you have. And so for me, uh, I've always been interested in paleontology. I've always been obsessed with dinosaurs and all that stuff. You know, the TV shows, um, had a huge box of toys, um, books, pretty much everything associated with dinosaurs. And so if you ask my grandma, I was able to spell paleontologist uh, back when I was in kindergarten. And so, yeah, I've always been obsessed with it. Um, uh, I always spend time as a kid going outside, looking at the ground, trying to find whatever I could, and always being curious and, and trying to trying to be a scientist while I was out there. Um, so the obsession started early. I know I can remember going into the little pen we had for our hogs and finding some some things that were definitely definitely skulls. Um, looking back now, I'm pretty sure they were weird pieces of cement, but I was super obsessed with it. Um, but my story is actually pretty cool because it is associated with the specimen that is here at the museum. And so back when I was younger, we would always go to my great uncle's farm down in Southern Nebraska uh, for Thanksgiving. And we would always have parties on what they would call the rock. And so we would have these parties on this big rock outcrop. And I would, I would always be looking down, looking at the ground. So one of the years when I was about seven or eight, I was out there and I looked down and thought I saw a dinosaur track. And told my parents and they, I'm pretty sure they did not believe me that it was a dinosaur track. Um, at least until one of the other family members who happened to be a geologist came by and looked at it and got really excited and realized how significant it was because it was a dinosaur track. And so we got the University of Nebraska to come out and look at these things. And so here I have an example of one of them. They found about 20 different tracks uh, all across that uh, rock outcrop. And so they made molds and casts of them, so exact replicas, exact copies, and we didn't excavate them from that rock because it was too hard, but we brought the exact copies back. Um, you can see one of them on display in the, on the third floor in Morrill Hall when we opened back up um, in the Jurassic Gallery. But they, they figured out that these were uh, prints from about 90 million years ago um, from an ornithopod dinosaur or something sort of related to hadrosaurs, um, maybe something like an iguanodon. It's kind of tough to tell exactly what footprint, what animal left the certain footprint. But yeah, they found 20 different tracks and they're the only known dinosaur tracks from Nebraska. So there's not a lot of dinosaurs that we find here in the state. We only have maybe three or four confirmed things that we know of from, from Nebraska, but we do have a lot of other things that we can find. And so Nebraska is a really great place, probably the best place to find fossil mammals. So our record of fossil mammal evolution from about 35 million years ago to 10,000 years ago is probably the best in, the, in North America. And so as you go across the state, there's different, different fossils that you can find and different animals that you can encounter uh, while you're out there looking, looking for things. So uh, going from west to east on the western edge, northwest area, um, here's one example. I brought a few things out of an oreodont. This is an oreodont skull. And so probably don't know what that is because they're extinct today and they don't have any living relatives. But they're in the same uh, big group as um, sheep, pigs, and antelope and deer, things like that. And so these guys are pre were pretty common about 33 million years ago. And they came in a few different shapes and sizes. You can see there's big ones, smaller ones. But those are pretty common fossils that you find out in the out in the Panhandle on the western edge of the state. Um, another thing that we find out the, in that region would be titanotheres. So these guys are again don't have living relatives, 
but they have a similar body style and are somewhat related to rhinos in the same big group as those guys. Um, recently we've been working on one of the skulls that we found back from 1959. And so when the visible lab opened here uh, last year, about a year ago, we started working on this on this specimen and we finally got it pretty pretty close to done. So this is the skull of one of the titanotheres. You can see it's flipped upside down uh, on the top of its skull and you can see all the teeth are exposed right here and it's in really great shape because you can you can see all the teeth they're all exposed and it's in really good shape so um, as you go across the state towards maybe the, the central area if there's outcrops of rock you, you can find things from the Miocene era uh, some things maybe in the 15 or so million year old range uh, things like this tooth from a Fortess elephant is a good example of something you might find out there. And then I also have uh, a jaw here of a bone crushing dog that would have been about 10, 10 million years old. So you can see the teeth that were good for the crushing of the bone, similar to what hyenas do today, although they're not related to that. But yeah. Um, as you go more towards the eastern end of the state, you can, uh, in certain areas that aren't covered by farmland, you can find those dinosaur era rocks of about, there's a couple sections from 90 million years ago, and also about 75 million years ago. You can find things like uh, mosasaurs, so the big predators of the Cretaceous seaways, they had these sharp teeth that were great for hunting fish. And this is only about a third of what the jaw would have looked like. So it would have been about that long. And that one's also on display here at the museum. And so while we don't have a lot of dinosaurs, you can find a lot of things like mosasaurs, uh, plesiosaurs, um, something like the Loch Ness Monster, uh, similar to that sort of thing, uh, shark's teeth, things like that. And so those are, those are common in the outcrops on the eastern edge of the state. And then across the, across, um, on top of those, we also have ice age sediments that are pretty common all across Nebraska. And that's where you'd find the things like the mammoth teeth, which is the state, uh, state fossil is the mammoth, and we have elephant teeth from 90 counties out of the 93. So pretty much anywhere you go, you can find uh, elephant remains. And then also a couple of things that I've been working on lately are uh, fossil bison. And so this is the lower jaw from a bison that we found <clears throat> just last summer out in central Nebraska. And so bison are pretty common all throughout Nebraska. Those are... So we also have one of the vertebrae right here, um, probably from the right behind the neck where the hump is on, on a bison. And then just as an example, I have a part of the, uh, the hand bone right here. The same bone that is right here in us. That's one of these guys. How old? Um, so these are about uh, 12,000 years old. So these are some of the youngest fossils that we have. Um, by definition, a fossil is anything 10,000 years old, years old or older. And so these are some of the youngest things that we have. And so, my, yeah. So my job as a preparator is to prepare the fossils that we find that we collect out in the field. And to do this, we uh, we remove the rock from the fossil that surrounds the fossil and expose the important features that scientists need to study it, to identify it, and to do research on it. And so when we find a fossil in the field, we'll wrap it in this plaster jacket. So it's just burlap dipped in plaster. And so we make kind of a shell to protect the fossil while we bring it back to the lab, where we can uh, have it in more of a controlled environment and slowly work on removing the rock. And so this is part of the, an arm bone from, a bi from the bison that we found this summer. And so I'm just working on a, uh, getting it all exposed at this point. Um, some of the tools that we use for that, we have a bunch of them. We have little X-Acto knives and small scalpels. Um, we use pin vices to slowly, slowly chip away at the rock. Um, paint brushes. We have some tool, uh, toothbrushes too, smaller paint brushes. Um, we also have some funky tools, uh, got some dental dental tools, things you might see used at the dentist. And so we use those for the hard to reach places. Uh, we also have little needles and syringes that we can use to uh, get to the hard to reach places as well. So once we have the specimen removed, 
Uh, we can stabilize it and repair it if it's broken. A lot of the fossils that we find are really, really fragile um, out in the field. And so we'll repair it, label it, and add it to the collections for the researchers to study. And so, uh, like I said, we have over, over a million and a half fossils for, for the researchers to come in and look at. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I've got right now. And so hope you like the behind the scenes look at what we do here at the museum in the vertebrate paleontology division. And it, like I said before, if you have a comment, just leave it, leave it below and we'll be able to answer any of the questions that you have even now or later. I don't know if we have time now. Go outside, be curious. Oh yeah, and uh, go outside, um, be curious, be a scientist, be always looking for, for something that you can find. You, might, you never know if it'll be important or not. So thanks for watching.